Hey everyone, welcome back to Charmed Rewind! Whee! Whoa, we're back! <laughs> uh, we're back and the show's worse than ever. <laughs> we're on trial. We're on trial. <laughs> Trials and tribulations of watching Charmed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we did another uh, poll on Patreon. The winner this time was Season 6, Episode 19, Crimes and Witch Demeanors. Mm -hmm. They really had to stretch to get the witch in that one. Yeah, it's two of your favorite types of episodes, a trial episode and a clip show. Holy shit, they had to put <laughs> the worst of both worlds into it. Uh, I remember this episode distinctly because uh, the Charmed Ones are put on trial for fucking up. Mm -hmm. uh, Barbus is extremely right about everything. Mm hmm and uh but all it was really written in for was because the levitation power that phoebe had was too expensive yeah. so i really can't count it as calling them into account for anything i mean this is one of the few times the show does kind of punish them so That's it's true. like even though you know it has all these things against it i've got to rate it kind of highly especially for this <laughs> era of the show for doing something you get it but is it a good episode <laughs> Uh, there's parts of it. It's not great, but uh, Barbus was pretty oh, good. <laughs> okay, it should be noted a lot of this trial and a clip show, as we said. <laughs> trial this, and a clip show. <laughs> trial and a clip show. Like um, dinner and a movie. Trial dinner. and a clip show. <laughs> yeah. Um, the CW did a blatant lie ad <laughs> to promote this episode. They would do a lot of these where they would just change the name of the episode and they I would advertise it. Yummy. Yeah, they would advertise it as completely different. They would just make up a lie about what the plot was. And this one was so blatant. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was looking on the Charmed Wiki and I saw like they use like clips of like Phoebe as Godiva and like Piper yeah. doing Coyote Ugly. I was like, I need to see this trailer because this sounds like completely different than what actually happens in the episode. Phelan, can you can you play it again? We'll play it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking bad. WB, since the beginning of their charmed lives, they've used their powers for good. But it's the not so good. <laughs> 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 the graphic of them and the sexy music yeah. <laughs> okay so this is an audio format of, so i'm gonna explain to you guys they were playing a bunch of like sexy clips over this none of which are in this episode <laughs> you got uh the coyote piper on the table doing the the dance and then you got Phoebe doing a lap dance, which I don't think was even really Phoebe. I think it was some fantasy of Cole's or something. Maybe. I don't think she actually gives him a lap dance in the show, so you really can't even say that's... <laughs> they, could, they could be held accountable for that sexual behavior. Uh, <laughs> when they were so naughty. <laughs> yeah, like, this is about them exposing magic, and, like, if those were used, like, for no this reason... <laughs> This is actually quite a serious episode. They're mm -hmm. being put on trial for exposing magic. Daryl is going to be killed on yeah. death row. Yeah. Nothing about this is supposed to be funny. And they're like, but what if... Yeah. What if they're put on trial for being too sexy? <laughs> you're too sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... Was it, this was CW by this point, right? Or it was... It was still the WB. Right, because it was CW in their last season. Anyway, fucking WB. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking liars. I'm surprised they didn't, like, you know, edit the giant heads like Ian Amber Crombie's eyes, Burr. like, bugging out. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> they fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Phelan, let's uh, jump into crimes and witch demeanors. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so the first shot that we see Paige, Phoebe, and Daryl are pulling up in an SUV at night. Uh, Phoebe says this was the place she saw in a premonition, and Paige is like, eh, you kind of forced that premonition. Why did she force it? Uh, because the next thing Phoebe says is, Daryl, will you hurry up? I've got a date! Not the prime time, bitch! <sighs> the first thing, 13, 13 seconds, seconds in. 13 seconds, 13 seconds Lucky in. number 13. Stupid Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> will you hurry up? I've got a date! Wait, ah. <sighs> can't st just when the show starts and there's a line like that and you just have to pause because of how dumb it is immediately this is the impetus of the whole episode everything that happens is because phoebe is fucking rushing because she wants to go on a date with a guy that she doesn't even like anyway mm -hmm. uh and all of this happens because of her by the end of the episode they kind of act like she's been unfairly persecuted yeah. they don't act like this happened because she absolutely fucked up 
Yeah, it's like there's a little bit of self-reflection, but I don't feel like Phoebe actually calls into account anything she's done. I feel like the way that she words it is like, well, other people think this too, so I guess. Not yeah, that yeah. she thinks that this yeah, is true. Yeah, exactly. That is herself. true. That's how she words it. Anyway, so she's complaining about a date. Uh, during this whole thing, she's wearing a stupid pink beret. <laughs> <laughs> she wore a stupid beret. <laughs> That's what you wear for your demon, honey. Yeah. <laughs> the kind you find at a witchcraft store. Yeah, they, never, they never try. They always act like they're just ready to go clubbing or something. Well, instead she is of... going on a date later, right? This is her date Yeah, outfit? she can't bother to change again. Jeez, <laughs> what do we expect out of them? She doesn't expect to be doing a lot of work anyway. Uh, so they're going after this uh, killer who's possessed by a phantasm. Uh, and he's going to murder someone at a pawn shop. And Daryl is uh, asking where he's going to be. And Phoebe thinks that he's asking about her date. <laughs> <laughs> and Daryl's like, well, if this guy was possessed, he's not really responsible for all of these killings, right? But they're like, no, nah, phantasms only possess bad guys. So it's fine. <laughs> Which seems to be contradicted later in this episode. Yeah, that's true. Well, we don't know. Well, didn't see, and we see her up until her death in this series, and she's apparently not an evil person. <laughs> they may consider her evil because she's against the oh. Charmed Ones, but she is right. <laughs> yeah, she's right. <laughs> so, yeah, immediately wrong. And like This is classic Charmed Ones anyway, like assuming possessed people are always guilty. Yeah, this is terrible logic and why like, would they need uh, to possess bad people anyway like they're wouldn't they go after someone else and let the bad people do bad stuff too you'd think or yeah. the phantasms are just like i want to i want to get in on that action mm -hmm. yeah apparently like what they say is like oh yeah they just make bad people do worse things yeah maybe he wasn't Which, like a killer he was just like you know Small-time thief or something. Yeah, it could have been. They don't know how much they escalated this. And, like, it puts him in the situation where he gets into a shootout with a police officer. Yeah. Which probably wouldn't have happened if he wasn't possessed. So, yeah. the fact, like, Daryl shoots this guy dead and no one cares. Like, and I know the Churned Ones barely can care when an actually innocent person dies. But, like, there's zero well, shits given that I mean, someone has just died in front of them. Yeah, I mean, the fact that uh, we find out later this was all a setup by Barbus. do we even know if that guy was bad? He might have been a good guy who got possessed <laughs> to murder people. Yeah, because, you know, since we find out their whole thing about phantasms is wrong, <laughs> he might have been a good person. He's like, he's just out there trying to, like, make money for his starving kids. <laughs> 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 he gets shot by Daryl, and the charming one's like, well, date time! Yeah, <laughs> Phoebe has a date, okay. Do something, do it! So she's in a rush uh, this whole time, and Daryl's like, wow, she really wants to get this demon, and Paige is like, nah, she just wants to get your date. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't As previously you. established. She, she told him that, too. He should know. Uh -huh. <laughs> she said, hurry up, I got a date. <laughs> it's like, it's just trying to remind you, don't you for one second think that Phoebe actually cares yeah. about saving lives. Yeah, this is about to, her date. They always have to drive it home more than they need to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, they have to make them look worse than ever. It's so weird. So they run over to this guy. Uh, he's breaking into this pawn shop, and... Uh, Daryl goes, freeze, police! Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only reason he's there, to do that, and then nearly get killed. Yeah. There's no reason they couldn't have vanquished this phantasm and then let Daryl arrest him or whatever, like, because it's not like there was any po official police procedure going on here. Mm -hmm. There's really no They just reason wanted the there. blame to be on Daryl for killing the human, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, the guy uh, shoots at Daryl, so Daryl shoots the shit out of him. Yeah. <laughs> at the same time, Phoebe throws a potion. Uh, that takes out the phantasm and it becomes shitty Ghostbusters for a little bit. Yeah, like with a wand. <laughs> yeah, I I guess it's supposed to be a wand or some stick that they hold. Yeah, they never explain what it is. Yeah, it's like their cap, their ghost capture stick, <laughs> phantasm yeah. capture stick. I yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah, the phantasm gets sucked uh, into the stream into their stick wand. Mm -hmm. Daryl thanks them for saving his life, but as they point out, they put him in danger in the first place. And might I add, pointlessly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Paige who points that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the charmed idiots leave in a hurry for Phoebe's date. <laughs> As they are going, Paige notices a car that wasn't there before, and Phoebe's like, "Hey, get a move on. Who cares?" Yeah. 
<laughs> like, and this is really important to what goes on in this episode. Yeah, this all happens because Phoebe doesn't give a shit. Yeah, she's rushing things. Like, and that's called new account. And like, this should have been brought up specifically. Yeah, she's like, the one that Paige ignores noticed that. something, and then Phoebe tells her to shut up. Let's go. Yeah, that wasn't <laughs> even to do with her uh, misusing magic. It's just her being neglectful and selfish. Yeah, you'd like to think that, wouldn't you? Terrible. Uh, well, it turns out Inspector Sheridan is in the car. Uh, Inspector Sheridan, this is her first appearance. She <laughs> is. <laughs> I don't remember if we talked about an episode with her. She's uh, an adversary, I guess, investigating the Charmed Ones. Mm -hmm. uh, she's introduced here, taping the whole thing. She's got the whole Phantasm fight uh, on her tape, and she goes, Got him! Yeah. <laughs> we got one! <laughs> uh, at the manor the next morning. Uh, Paige enters the kitchen in a comfy pink sweater. Yeah. Uh, she's acting all tired, so I thought it was pajamas, but she's got like khaki pants with it. So I don't know. Maybe she just got up and she was just she's maybe just she tired. Just threw on a pair of normal pants to go downstairs. I don't yeah, know. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phoebe is there uh, wearing a hideous outfit. <laughs> it is a red tank top with a fleur de lis symbol on it and mm. detached sleeves. Or arm warmers of some sort. <laughs> also with fleur de -lis on them, I think. <laughs> uh, she wears this the whole episode, so it's really hard to take her seriously. Because she looks dumb as fuck. This is her official trial outfit. Her trial outfit. <laughs> uh, Paige asks how her date went. And Phoebe's like, yeah, it was great, except the guy wasn't the man of my dreams. Me, 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 no, me, she me. says it was terrible. She starts complaining about this. She says it was. She says it sacrastic. Oh, yeah. But she says it was great, great except yeah. for he wasn't the man of my dreams. Mm -hmm. So but it's she's, like, she's complaining she needs to get to the date, then she's complaining about the date, yeah. and then she's complaining that she needs to go on another date. It's like, <laughs> That's shut never good up. Enough. <laughs> uh, this is because she's on her, uh, gotta have her baby pops mission through the season. <laughs> um, she had a vision, I think it was, I guess it was somewhere in the season, she had a vision that she was pregnant, so she's like, uh, like with all of her premonitions about herself, she seems to think that she has to make this happen, mm -hmm. not that this is telling you what's going to happen. Uh, so she's trying to find her baby daddy <laughs> through <laughs> this whole season. Um, and she's saying that uh, she saw visions uh, of what was going to happen with this guy, but it was just sex, uh, but not having a baby. And she's like, well, it's going to be a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> not interested in non-baby sex. <laughs> Uh, she is making a potion during all this. And Paige is like, oh, you're demon hunting? And she's like, no, no, I have a lunch date. <laughs> <laughs> she is, of course, not doing anything useful. Uh, she wants to force a premonition again to see if this guy is the right guy before the entrees come so she doesn't, quote, waste the calories. Oh my goodness. These are your heroes. <laughs> what a fucking bitch. <laughs> I hate her so much. I know. Like, you, like, you think about the fact now, like, the... They turned into these terrible people because Alyssa Milano and Holly Marie Combs had control. It's like, why do you make your characters look horrible? Like, yeah, you kind of think about, like, you know, when David Hasselhoff became an executive producer on Baywatch mm. and Baywatch Nights, he's having, like, sexy ladies all over him. Mm. He's a little egotistical, but he does show heroic qualities. Mm. But with them, it's like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to save people. I don't want to be inconvenienced. As if they are the characters. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, this is fiction, right? You can just write them to be heroic. <laughs> you yeah. can have them save the day with as much work as it would take to just stand around bitching. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of jarring when you see, like, the clip machine at the trial with the holograms where you see them caring in the early season stuff again. <laughs> just briefly. Like, oh, yeah, that's what it's like when they care. Oh. <laughs> amazing if only they could still do that <laughs> Paige, as the last remaining sister with any humanity says uh you're breaking every wiccan rule that exists and phoebe says relax after all these years i know what i'm doing <laughs> well as if they care about the personal gain thing anyway after this they continue to do the same shit no mm. consequences she explains that Piper's in magic school at the moment, so eh, they need a boost of power anyway, is the excuse she says, as if that would help them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all only helping herself. Uh, I believe at this time, uh, it seems to be, they are just writing in as little Piper as possible because Holly Marie Combs is pregnant. Yeah, this is that's near what the end of her pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. So 
that's why she's in magic school. I don't remember what official reason in the canon is that she's at magic school. She's hanging out. Yeah, maybe it's the same thing. She's pregnant, and they're, like, trying to protect her there. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Until magic school becomes the demon hangout yeah. with Merc. <laughs> <laughs> It was the most dangerous place ever. <laughs> so uh, anyway, Chris orbs in and says that he has a new theory on who might be trying to turn Wyatt evil. Uh, I'm distracted because through the rest of this episode, he's just wearing a shirt that looks like Long John's. Yeah. <laughs> I just keep thinking he's got like a butt flap in the back. It's going to go prospecting. <laughs> Uh, Paige makes fun of him for his lack of progress all fucking season. This is episode 19. <laughs> he hasn't fucking done anything. Uh, he's here to mostly have daddy issues with Leo. Yeah. He's like, crawling in my skin. <laughs> These wounds, they will not heal. <laughs> I don't remember what exactly happened. I feel like the reason he has a beef with Leo is just because Leo either died or wasn't around it was yeah. like you're a shitty dad and like Missed well maybe if you hadn't game. yeah maybe if you hadn't made your parents get divorced and done all this other shit your dad would <laughs> not be around you stupid idiot this comes in i can't help but feel partly responsible <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he's avoiding talking to leo uh phoebe bitches at him to do it uh he pieces out and the doorbell rings uh daryl's wife sheila is there crying because he's been arrested for murder Ah. Bum, bum, bum. Very weird the way this happens because it's like she, you don't even know what she's doing first because she just kind of comes in like with her fate face hand pump. over her face. Uh. You're like, uh. is Chris still not talking to his dad? Uh. Yeah, and she just kind of walks in and they go, "What's wrong?" <laughs> Phoebe's on a date. Oh, <laughs> like, oh yeah, uh, Daryl. Yeah. He, he's murdering people. <laughs> She comes in and then she's like, Phoebe's on a date. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> uh, so Phoebe and Paige visit Daryl in jail to find out what's going on. He's been accused of murdering the pawn shop guy. Uh, Phoebe's like, well, this was self-defense. Uh, but Daryl doesn't seem to remember any of it. He doesn't remember how it happened. So uh, they seem to immediately cotton on to the fact that the cleaners are involved. There's no mm -hmm. other guesses. It's just the next scene. They're with the cleaners. Yeah, they immediately decide, well, let's throw a magic tantrum. <laughs> yeah, uh, before that happens, uh, his lawyer comes in, uh, and Phoebe says that he's innocent, and she knows because she was there, and the guy is just like, he just hand waves it away like a lie. Mm -hmm. He doesn't take it, he's like, I'll perjure yourself anyway. <laughs> <laughs> she, well, I mean, he does have video, I guess. I guess. Well, she says she was driving around the area, so she could have not been on camera and seen it. Well, it's like down an alley, though. She, she, she was just not driving. on camera. Yeah. It was just a shot of him and the guy. But, she could have been I mean, there. if she was there and saw that, <laughs> I mean, she's <laughs> not doing any favors saying, like, oh, yeah, I saw him yeah, kill that guy in cold blood and I drove by. I'm like, cool. Yeah, well, the fact <laughs> that he doesn't take that into account and she doesn't get into trouble, he's a pretty bad fucking lawyer, isn't he? Yeah, he's Daryl's lawyer. He's not there to catch her. <laughs> <laughs> he's not very good. Yeah. Basically, Lionel Hutz. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, I watched some episodes of Murder She Wrote. Yeah. I wasn't really paying attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not Murder Matt She Wrote. Lock. Matt Lock. Murder She Wrote. You just everyone gets murdered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I watched Murder She Wrote, and that's uh, going to show you how to get away with murder. <laughs> <laughs> so the lawyer is like, uh, "Well, we got video of it," and Daryl's like, "It's cool. Show it to them." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's like, "All right. Well, <laughs> pop that DVD in." <laughs> I'm just a small time lawyer. I don't know anything about anything. <laughs> Uh, so he shows them this video of Daryl murdering the guy in cold blood. It's completely different than what happened. Uh, They're like, no, no. So that's how they know the, the cleaners are involved. Uh, meanwhile, Inspector Sheridan, no first name. <laughs> never given one. Never given one. Uh, gets a visit from Phoebe and Paige. Uh, they're here to bitch at her because she taped the murder and they think she edited it to frame him. I guess this was her first guess, actually, before the cleaners was. Yeah. She just edited this tape to look like he just murdered and <laughs> as if she has the greatest effects team in the world to yeah. make it look like he, it's like, he did this that. This is well before all his deep faking stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Do they think she has some magic powers, too, and did this? Like yeah, she would have had to have to pulled that off back then. Yeah. 
Um, she's like, well, I didn't fake anything. I've been investigating Daryl for weeks because so many of his suspects end up dead or missing. <laughs> Another great job by the Charmed Ones. Yeah. <laughs> they have a whole twist here that the fact she's doing this investigation is because she's possessed by a phantasm. But why wouldn't anyone be fucking investigating this? Yeah. It's ridiculous how many, like, trails of bodies lead mm -hmm. to them. They're always, like, on his crime reports. Like, of course it would seem suspicious. Yeah. People that go dis like either vanish or die at the Halliwell house, like, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, I think she eventually does start a legit investigation about this after this. That's the whole reason yeah, why. She does. That's why she dies. Yeah, that's why she dies. <laughs> so, like, uh, the fact that they're like, oh, it only started because of Barbus or whatever, it's like, really? Five years in? This was the season six. She said, like, over the last five years. But this is season six, so six years in. Mm -hmm. No one bothered to look into this? You're really? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky ones. Uh, Phoebe didn't sense any lying from her, uh, so they're confused. Why didn't she sense any lying? She was possessed by a phantasm. Mm. I mean, I guess she didn't uh, edit the tape, but she did frame him. So why wouldn't Phoebe... Her empath powers are fucking useless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't even do the one thing they're supposed to be good for. Remember we, we looked at that genie episode last, and then it's like, oh, she tricked my powers or something. <laughs> <laughs> why did you write these in? They never knew what to do with them. No. And that's why they're removed in this episode <laughs> and never brought back. <laughs> so uh, Phoebe and Paige decide uh, it's the cleaners, so they orb into a busy marketplace and just start... Uh, Killing people. Yeah. <laughs> They start killing people. Uh, they start doing a bunch of magic to get uh, the cleaner's attention. There's a shot where Phoebe sets some flowers on fire and she just starts smiling evilly. <laughs> Why does she do this? <laughs> What's wrong with her? I also just noticed in this scene, uh, her jean jacket has flaps on the back. Yeah, it looks like little um, insect wings. <laughs> I think it's maybe a hoodie that unzips. It's real weird, though. I feel if like they could there afford was... to have her levitate, she could have used her dumb little wings and slug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this whole episode happens because levitation was too expensive. That's mm. it. That's the only reason. And she never levitates in this episode. They just no. go, remember that power? You're not seeing that again. Yeah. <laughs> too expensive. We're gonna get it back in the comics. <laughs> so the cleaners show up. They look annoyed, rightfully so. They're like, well, you framed Daryl, why? And they're like, well, magic was exposed, so we had to cover it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess the whole reason that they framed Daryl is because this investigation's going on in the first place. Maybe that, like, yeah, ties well, everything up. Yeah, because I kind of wondered first, like, did they have to make it so Daryl killed this guy in cold blood in the revised version? But it's like, I guess because... They're trying to, you know, wrap everything up. Daryl will be the last innocent to die, I guess, yeah. for the greater good. For the greater good. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, we told you last time, we'll clean up after ourselves, <laughs> stupid cleaners. And they had to point out that this time they didn't know about it, so how are they supposed to clean this up? Yeah. Uh, Phoebe's like, I don't care. If they don't fix this, they're just going to keep exposing magic. They're going to do the same thing they did last time. We're just going to keep doing it. This is around, like, Phoebe should have had the revelation, too, that she's the one who blew off the car Sheridan was in. Like, yeah. she does never. They could have used this yeah. to, I mean, they could have made somewhat of a story out of this. Like, she's like, oh my god, you're right. Like, if I hadn't done this, this wouldn't have happened. And then you would kind of, it would feel less like, ah, eh, well, we deserve all of the good things because we do so much for people. Mm -hmm. Except they I don't. Take time <laughs> out of dates to the keep dates. someone from dying. Not to not to date. Uh, the cleaners say they don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> uh, they're under strict orders from the tribunal. I guess this is the first mention of this tribunal. So uh, smash cut to exposition dump Leo <laughs> and his very short, ugly haircut <laughs> at magic school. Uh, Gideon's also there. That's the head of magic school. You know, I do like when they had characters like Gideon around because I feel like, you know, charmed. To a lesser extent than Supernatural did, but they kind of had that thing where they just kept stripping away the side characters, kind of lessening the world that they built here. So yeah. It's nice. It was nice when there's you no know, extra characters who kind of reoccurred, like Gideon. <laughs> yeah, and a character who was kind of morally gray that they didn't just immediately, like, bungle the story with, mm -hmm. like they did with Cole. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the Tribunal 
uh, as explained by Leo, is a group of elders and demons set up to monitor magic and make sure no one finds out about it. Uh, they also created the cleaners. So the cleaners are like middle management. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just added this new layer to it that's unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, just so they could have a crappy trial. <laughs> I think the, the tribunal also gets like murdered and then they create a new one in the comics. So <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, uh, Leo says this is part of the grand design or something. I kind of tuned out at this part. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> they get into grand design and shit. Yeah. They're like, as Leo is talking, like Piper enters, and there's this look of fear on Leo's face. <laughs> oh, my horrible wife's here. I trust you do not feel you're being treated unfairly. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they explain the situation to Piper. Um, she's barely in this episode. She's just here to kind of be like, all right, thanks for filling me in. Yeah, it's a surprisingly uh, good Piper episode for this late into the series. Yeah, she does kind of seem like she doesn't give a shit about certain yeah. things, well, though. But... I mean, mostly because she's not there for a <laughs> Sure. <laughs> uh, Paige rightfully says that all this happened because Phoebe was in a hurry and blowing everything off. So <laughs> kind of is her fault. Uh, so they ask Gideon to take them to the tribunal, and he's like, they're not like anything you faced before. They're far more boring than you could imagine. Yeah. They're like <laughs> stupid heads in the sky, kind of like that Krypton bullshit yeah. from Superman. <laughs> they're stupid Superman 2 floating heads or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Gideon takes them to this like black void with like some lights on the floor. That's th where the tribunal hangs out. Yeah. He summons them by saying some Latin. And according to the trivia, this translates to, God, look at the time. My wife will kill me. <laughs> Leo must know this one pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a funny joke. It's like, well, I guess you have to really <laughs> dig deep to find Charm's good jokes. Uh, yeah, so as established, the tribunal are a bunch of stupid floating Superman heads. Uh, one of them is Ian Abercrombie. Yeah, of Garfield, The Tale of Two Kitties fame. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> apparently they're distinguished by the demons are more gray and the the non-demons are more blue but this is almost exactly the same shade i don't know how they know who's the demons and who's not because they all just look like normal dudes mm -hmm. it's just because demons you know they don't have color projectors yet <laughs> i guess <laughs> uh and the the tribunal um they're there to challenge them on this decision. And uh, the tribunal's like, why are there only two charmed ones? And Ian Abercrombie's like, no, no, one's pregnant, so don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, cool about it. Like, oh, no, let's not bother her with this. <laughs> she has time off for pregnancy. She has maternity leave <laughs> from the tribunal. <laughs> Oh, well done. <laughs> yeah, they're like, uh, you can speak on her behalf, but the whole time Gideon's speaking on their behalf, so it's like, they're not even speaking for her anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so they're like, yeah, we want to challenge the actions of the cleaners. Uh, the tribunal's like, cool, we're going to summon uh, uh, opposing counsel. It's your greatest enemy, Barbus. <laughs> <laughs> this is the episode, too, where they call him their worst enemy. Yeah. <laughs> greatest enemy. <laughs> what, was he? <laughs> he was, I guess he was the greatest guest actor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like, hey, wait a minute. We vanquished him to hell. And he's like, no, I've been granted a temporary leave of absence. <laughs> yeah. Like a whole lot of stuff apparently happened like within a minute. Yeah. It, it makes it seem like within a, a few seconds, he was informed of this and all this happened. Yeah. Because like, um, he petitioned to be the, you know, the prosecution and all this stuff, apparently all within this one minute. Yeah. They said we liked his pitch. Yeah. But like, uh, I don't know. It makes it seem like this all happened in two seconds. But like, I think the cleaners say some bullshit about this being preordained or something earlier in the episode. So maybe they already knew it was going to happen, but they but still let it happen. They still had to call the tribunal and ask them to have this, you know, questioning of the cleaners actions in the first place. Yeah, they were. So the they didn't that... come in like we, yes, we knew this would happen. They were like, all right, you convinced us that we'll even do this trial. In yeah. The first it, place. <laughs> it seems like a lot of things had to fall into place outside of Barbus's control for, for this to occur really yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. And like Barbus had to come in and say like, I want to be the prosecution for this thing that hasn't been asked for yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how all of this works. Um, 
Barbus is like, hey, let's uh, look at some clips of what's at stake first, <laughs> uh, so you know what's going on. So the girls that's are what sexy clips are shown. <laughs> <laughs> Naked woman. Uh, the girls are shown video of uh, them doing sexy things. And then- <laughs> no, actually, they're shown Daryl on death row. <laughs> Far funnier clip. And it plays sexy music. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> the muted trumpets out. <laughs> Daryl's like, can you please not? I can hear that, you know. It does seem kind of fast, but the tribunal explains that they accelerated time, but only for the execution. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? What is going on? <laughs> yeah real weird specific things they can somehow do here like, yeah they thought of this um this plot but they they were like how do we explain the time difference because people on death row don't immediately yeah. get executed and they're like, i don't know they accelerated time they could have thought of any other thing to try and and have stakes here that made sense like they could have been like okay so Daryl goes on trial, and then that guy's brother stabs him in court or something. You know, mm-hmm. They could add something where it's like Daryl's going to die yeah. because of what happened here. Mm-hmm. But, but they do this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Phoebe bitches at Gideon, saying he didn't warn them that they'd summon their worst enemy, Barbus. <laughs> <laughs> and then she continues bitching at the tribunal about it. But Barbus says in his defense, Come on! <laughs> <laughs> He makes a strong argument. He makes a strong argument. <laughs> it's like the whole time the, the demons on the tribunal are like pushing this along to help Barbus out. And it's like, aren't they supposed to be impartial here? Isn't that the whole point of having this tribunal to like protect magic? Or is it like they're always going to be doing stupid shit? Yeah. And then the like, the elders are like, I don't know. What are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, I guess they have to agree with it. But I guess they're just kind of easily convinced by their demon friends. It doesn't seem like a, a lot of consequences for the, or any consequences for the demon tribunal members uh, helping uh, Barbus to set this whole thing up. Did they help him set it up? They did, because he made the deal with them. Or did he? Yeah. That's what they say in the episode. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I think he made the deal with them to be the prosecution in all this. Yeah, but he was working with them was to he? get his deal. Yeah. Okay. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Phoebe's like, there's a conflict of interest here. Mm-hmm. This is a setup. And the tribunal gets mad, so they activate a clip show. <laughs> I'm going to punish you with a clip show. <laughs> Remember the first time Barbus tried to kill them? <laughs> we get to see that again. Barbus says, ah, the good old days. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, back when you cared. Yeah, that's what the audience is thinking. Like, ah, uh, the good old days. <laughs> Uh, the girls are like, well, we got to prove that Barbus set this up, uh, and that'll fix this. So, Leo, go look for some evidence. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gideon is speaking on their behalf, uh, and he says they never failed in their duty to keep the big secret, except for those cases where they did, and the time that they threatened to do it in this very episode. Yeah. <laughs> What's the line Barbus says where he's like, no, we always have to save their magical asses? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. They have to cover up their for their own magical asses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everything he says in this episode is true. Yeah. You can't be on anyone's side but Barbus's. <laughs> and, yeah, and like, maybe that's why those demons in the tribunal don't get in trouble, because they're right. Yeah, All of this is right. <laughs> well, in his defense, come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they show a clip of Daryl covering up for Cole um, during something going on in season five. Uh and Barbus is like, yeah, yeah, show the rest of the clip, though. Humor me and play the hologram a little longer. Mm-hmm. Hologram is what they call the hol- it? Yeah, that's odd. I think he says hologram or some, hologram. <laughs> some, some weird way that old people say hologram. <laughs> One of the talking heads is like, do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Uh, and so it shows the part of the clip where Phoebe punches Paige right after that. <laughs> Phoebe's like, that's not fair. I was under the influence of evil. Evil she chose to accept, and the yeah. grace she never showed Cole for the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's only poor Phoebe when it happens to her. Right? Everyone else, it's their fault. Right? That's a big part of their argument. Like, yeah, we get possessed by evil all the time. It's not our fault. But apparently it was all Cole's fault Yeah, during all that thing. <laughs> Which she convinced Cole to take on, too. Yeah. Stupid. Uh, so Barbus proceeds to argue about all the times the girls fucked up and have to clean up after their own magical asses. I did write it in quotes. Okay. <laughs> 
uh, all the times they've turned evil, how much they suck, uh, all truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Billy Drago is acting circles around everyone. Yeah. He is having the time of his life, and he makes a trial episode far more entertaining than it should be, mm -hmm. and a clip show. Yeah. Like, that's a pretty good feat, I would say. Oh, like, when Leo leaves, too, I love the line he says, like, Leo orbs out, and he goes, was I boring him? <laughs> yeah. He's the one saving grace of this episode. <laughs> He says all these like great lines and he's like putting his feet up on the desk or like throwing his hands out like, mm, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, so meanwhile, uh, Leo has asked for Chris's help. I think he briefly goes to Piper and then she's like, yeah, go ask Chris. It's a nothing burger scene. Mm -hmm. So he goes to Chris uh, and they're in hell. <laughs> Chris they're is teetering above it because he's gonna drop the guy back yeah they're in a, a crevice he's leading to hell threatening him they're playing like bad cop lazy cop yeah, <laughs> yeah chris is holding this demon uh by the way the demon's name is finks <laughs> he's, he's got holding stupid hair <laughs> yeah stupid hair finks um he's holding him above some lava and he's yeah. like if you don't talk i'm gonna drop you in leo is leaning casually against some rocks going come like, on yeah <laughs> I think this is a bit much, Chris. Oh, well. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so this demon admits that, uh, I don't know if he heard in, like, demon prison or he happened to be in on it, but he knows that Barbus uh, used some phantasms to do his dirty work. Mm -hmm. uh, but Phoebe and Paige already knew a phantasm was, evo was involved and still acted like idiots, so this really doesn't change what happened in the slightest. No. Uh, Leo says Barbus must have cut a deal with the demon members of the tribunal to try and win the case. Uh, again, unclear on the timeline of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So Chris says they should take Finks to the tribunal to say all of this. And Leo's like, well, he's a demon. They'll discredit him. Despite the fact the opposing counsel is a demon and half the tribunal is demons. And they also know about this because they worked with Barbus. So <laughs> what, <laughs> what the, what's his fucking point? <laughs> uh, they start arguing and then Chris accidentally drops Finks into hell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my mistake. He goes, shoot, look what you made me do. <laughs> <laughs> and somewhere Margoyle sheds a tear. Thinks was his good buddy. <laughs> <laughs> he turned into an ironing board for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I said good cop, lazy cop. It's bad cop, lazy cop. Yeah, <laughs> there's no good cops involved here. Uh, meanwhile, the girls are watching more clips. Uh, Gideon gives a big speech, like, I'm just a southern lawyer. <laughs> and then Barbus condescendingly claps for him after it. <laughs> and he's like, well, you just made the case for me, because he showed all the times they had to cover up for themselves. <laughs> yeah. And then he shows a bunch of clips of them being dicks. <laughs> um, there's a really long clip from the superhero episode, which is, all of that's embarrassing anyway. But they add this sinister music over it. Mm -hmm. While Phoebe's like torturing a landlord and telling Cole to leave or that she has to leave because her loyal readers need her. <laughs> it's supposed to be funny in the episode, but adding the sinister music, it's like it's a lot more honest. <laughs> yeah, it really is. There's also a clip of Cole killing a bunch of people on his own, and Phoebe's like, Well, we weren't there. And Barbus is like, Your cold rejection of his love is why he did it. <laughs> <laughs> and the tribunal's like, Yeah, can't argue with that. <laughs> I mean, too, he's still around because they're like, you yeah, know, you will die on our terms. They could have showed other reasons why that was kind of their fault, but yeah. I guess, like... They wouldn't let him die. They wouldn't <laughs> let him die, and also the whole thing with the source was because of Phoebe. There were many yeah. other things that he could have shown that legit made a case for it. Exactly. Uh, Barbus is like, well, we shouldn't be deciding if Daryl lives or dies. We should be deciding if the Charmed Ones practice magic ever again. And the tribunal's like, yeah, sure. Mm, yeah, let's add that. <laughs> yeah, they've so uh, at stake here. We have Daryl, we have the Charmed Ones, and we have Barbus getting out of hell. So he's added a lot of different, different uh, things to this mm -hmm. than what was but originally they liked agreed the pitch. to. Yeah, the tribunal's like, we liked your pitch, and you know what? He's really charismatic. I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at the manor, Chris asks Leo how any of this stuff with the phantasm proves anything, and um, they don't really <laughs> explain it either. <laughs> Because who cares about that? They have to have a father-son argument. Yeah, like, because of my haircut, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his hair looks bad. Uh, Leo's a bad dad. Chris is a bad son. The end. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> Two bad neighbors. <laughs> yeah, this is this is all for them to realize. Hey, phantasms is a plural, so that probably means more than one, right? <laughs> it took mm, yes. them this long to come to this conclusion. Ah. So at the trial, uh, the girls ask Gideon to show the to show the tribunal all the good stuff they've done. Um, but and he then has no it's clips. like, yeah, it goes footage not found. He doesn't show any clips. They're like, yeah, I think our our good works will show. You know, we'll be in good standing. That'll well, speak for themselves. And then Phoebe he shows says clips. that to Gideon, and he has a look on his face like we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but they do say like yeah it our work will stand for itself uh -huh. and then he doesn't show any clips <laughs> that's why he has that it. look on his face he's yeah. like i don't have any clips of that <laughs> he's like um you want me to do a, a wb edit and make it seem like something it isn't yeah <laughs> It'll show, like, these people being saved, and we'll cut out the part where they die yeah. shortly after. <laughs> he edits it, so he's talking, and they're talking about the sweet can, sweet yeah. can. <laughs> Thank you, baby, you saved me. <laughs> it's that Scooby-Doo movie edit where he says the town stinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so... Uh, he has no clips. Barbus decides to cross-examine one of the cleaners. They only have the one guy show up for the other scenes. There was two of them, but only the one guy shows up the rest of the episode. Did they not mm -hmm. have the other one? He's the main one. He's the main <laughs> cleaner. Uh, he basically goes, yeah, they suck. Here's all the policemen they got killed. <laughs> mm. And they show a bunch of- Bruce Campbell. Yeah, they show a bunch of clips. They show uh, Bruce Campbell, who is an FBI agent. They show Andy, but they don't show his face, and they no. just call him Prue's true love. Yeah. It was really weird. That was strange. Especially considering he was their friend, too. They, they like, were childhood friends. And they're yeah. like, ah, Prue's true love. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever that was. Uh, yeah, so they have just a... a buffet of of law enforcement dying at their hands yeah, and, they uh, even say like and this is going to continue yeah as a reminder the policewoman who recorded them is going to die in a yeah. later episode at the manor yeah, exactly <laughs> for the same reason <laughs> yeah barbus is like this could all end with daryl's death and he's like what do you think cleaner and phoebe goes why should we care what he thinks <laughs> yeah she, object she object. objection objection why should we care what he thinks <laughs> like lawyer phoebe yeah <laughs> she's really good at this. objection we shouldn't care about other sentient beings <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one of the tribunal guys goes i care yeah. <laughs> no, well one of the demon side says i care and she goes well you're a demon of course you care then one of the elder ones goes i care too she goes ah Never mind. <laughs> that is pretty funny, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I care. I care, too. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I withdraw my comment. <laughs> uh, so, meanwhile, during all of this, Gideon is going to make some more arguments for them. But Paige is like, hey, back off. As if she has a plan. Like, she's like, no, no, no. Don't make any more arguments. I think we're good. Yeah. Her plan is just call for Leo and ask what they got. <laughs> There's no plan here. Yeah. Like, she could have <laughs> fucked them all over. It's like, ha, ha, I have a plan. What is it? I have no plan. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Barbus's closing argument. How long we got to deal with these charmed ones before we're all fucked? I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Leo and Chris Orbin, Paige is like, what do you got? They found out Barbus sent uh, the Phantasm, which they already knew, and say that he got a get out of hell free card if he wins. Mm -hmm. How did Barbus know? That he would get a get out of hell free card, and when his dying ever stopped him from coming back without an explanation? Why'd well, he have to do all this? He just the next time he showed up after his first appearance, they vanquished him with the whole like, "I'm not afraid anymore." No, mm -hmm. and then the next appearance, they don't explain why he's alive again. He's just there. <laughs> so they're like, "Wait a minute," because there's more than one. I guess Sheridan must have been possessed, and that's why she taped the whole thing. Yeah, this or is... she was following him because she was investigating. Like, why does the do they think that would be unusual? She was investigating him. Yeah, like, Barbus kind of says this after after he kind of just goes, "Well, uh, well, I'm a demon. What do you expect?" But he does kind of make the case after this, where he goes, "Like, you know, it's very possible this could have happened without this, you know, phantasm yeah. possessing her." Because it does. Yeah. <laughs> She investigates the same person, decides to investigate because there's a bunch of weird things around these charmed ones and Daryl. <laughs> yeah, Sheridan being possessed, uh, does this imply that she's a bad person because a phantasm possessed her? Or can they just possess anyone and that was just bullshit that yeah, Phoebe was saying? like I was saying earlier, I think this just proves the case that they were very wrong <laughs> about what phantasms do. <laughs> Idiots. 
Uh, meanwhile, Daryl is in death row still. Uh, Piper teleports in from magic school. Like, he asks how she did it, because mm. she didn't orb in. She couldn't orb in. No, without a, it's not the a orb lighter. effect either. Yeah, and she just says that's why they call it magic school, and then doesn't explain it. Yeah, and... It feels in- like there were plot points where they... If they could do a spell to teleport, it would have saved them, but they had to wait for a white lighter to do it. I yeah. feel like that happened. And it's interesting because, like, the Charmed Wiki, it lists, like, every power used in this episode, <laughs> even in the clips. But that is not on there. Unexplained. Just they t- mentioned that uh, Piper gets teleported by the tribunal after that but they do not explain what that teleport was so it's just very weird i mean you know that because it's not on the charmed wiki and they're meticulous that there is no fucking explanation Mm -hmm. they don't know otherwise it would be on there yeah she's like we're busting you out (laughs) daryl he's Um, like no i gotta pay for my crimes yeah (laughs) (laughs) the law doesn't apply to charmed ones and friends come on (laughs) uh daryl's like well i'm not gonna live the rest of my life on the run He's no fugitive. He's a cop. <laughs> Look how many, t- how many times he says, I'm a cop on this show. <laughs> so Piper teleports out. I'm not sure if she teleports out in disgust at his integrity. Well, that's or... when the tribunal calls her. She does kind of look away like it's disgust. Like, I yeah. have to go. I hate integrity. Yeah. Um, but she ends up at the tribunal because they have uh, transported her there. Uh, she's too pregnant to be on trial, but not pregnant enough to not hear the verdict on this yeah, one. You, you gotta hear this. <laughs> you gotta hear this. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Uh, you guys, uh, we rule in your favor. You could keep your powers, but Daryl's still going to die. <laughs> um, we get a dissolve montage of Daryl going to get executed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he, he and his wife uh, are sitting there and he's going to be let out and then they're crying and they do these awkward dissolves, but they don't have enough time to let any of the emotion settle in. Yeah, it's like they want to show time passed or something it's like yeah this is really emotional but we don't have time for it so we have like two seconds to do this yeah it looks really bad too because the first fade is just over the exact same shot Mm -hmm. phoebe angrily stands to make her case and as she walks away piper is behind her she looks like she does not care she's got full pregnant brain at this point Mm -hmm. checked out of the scene just Um, making sure her chair doesn't fall over yeah i think holly marie combs is just she thinks she's not on camera or something and like casually grabs the chair to fix it (laughs) yeah (laughs) so phoebe's like well barbus was setting us up and he's like they're always blaming somebody else (laughs) (laughs) yep uh, they're fixing to lose their powers here. And Paige is like, yeah, well, maybe we should. If this is the thanks for all our good work killing innocents. <laughs> like, oh, should we wipe your minds then and take your powers away? <laughs> like, sure. She's like, you can keep our stupid powers. <laughs> <laughs> Piper lazily waltzes into the shot to agree. Like, yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> we'll I also dies. think whatever they said. Yeah. He's like, "Eh, if Daryl dies, we quit. Whatever. And Barbus is like, great. Problem solved. Do it. (laughs) Chris brings Sheridan in and she freaks out. And Barbus calls this outrageous. (laughs) It's very true. Like, because he says you're not supposed to bring normals in here. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, Leo tells Barbus to sit down and shut up. Then a hologram, hologram, I don't know how they say it, a hologram. <laughs> it's uh, like Hound in the first episodes of Transformers. Hologram, Spike. Hologram, <laughs> hologram. Uh, it shows Sheridan being possessed by a phantasm, so luckily they were right. And that's why she investigated Daryl in the first place, because of no phantasm. No one would do this on her their own until a few episodes from now when she does it on her own. <laughs> the, the phantasm's been made. So the phantasm's like, what do we do, Barbus? Mm-hmm. Barbus is like, oh, I'm surrounded by idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and Leo and Chris are like, job done. Vanquish the phantasm. What if they wanted to cross-examine the phantasm more? Yeah. They just vanquish it. <laughs> I'm in danger. Uh, Sheridan passes out conveniently. And Piper's like, I guess there's some more cleaning up to do there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris catches the phantasm with his little wand. Right, yeah. Expecto put blow me, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Daryl's about to be injected on death row. <laughs> There's a bunch of serious shots of them, like, cleaning his arm, <laughs> sterilizing it. Why do they bother sterilizing an arm on death row? You're going to kill him. Why, <laughs> why are you doing this? 
Uh, he's about to be injected. He's real freaked out uh, in the middle of this, right? As they're about to, to put the needle in, uh, that's when everything changes around him. The cleaners have fixed it. He's about to go on a date with Sheila, but for some reason, they let him remember death row. Yeah, the, the cleaners, like, we just really hate Daryl, so we want yeah. him to be traumatized yeah. from this. One of them shows up and then, like, waves at him. Yeah, like, yeah, like and winks then and then yeah, exposes and, magic. Yeah, completely. and disappears in yeah. the middle of the Everyone's police like, precinct. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> who was that guy in the white suit who just does, disappeared? Does Daryl even know who the cleaners are? Does he even know who that guy is? Yeah, I don't think. I don't remember if he's ever encountered them. I don't know why he would, and they wouldn't wipe his mind of it. So, yeah, what does he think that is? <laughs> <laughs> Some guy in a suit waves at him. Like, okay. <laughs> Uh, so at the trial, uh, Barbus says, uh, just because he set it up doesn't mean he isn't right, especially mm. about Phoebe. True. Yeah. <laughs> and the tribunal's like, ah, fine, we'll take away her powers because levitation's too expensive. We never figured out what the hell to do with the empathy thing, so. Yeah, so technically <laughs> you win, Barbus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love, too, he's just like, all right, I can't get them all. What about Phoebe? She's the worst. And they're like, yeah, Phoebe. <laughs> Phoebe's the one that we will punish. <laughs> she is the worst. Like, he says, you know, she's been using all these powers yeah. for personal gain, yeah, which is the true. the thing that she's been doing this yeah. episode. And they're like, yeah, you know what? She fucking sucks. He's like, yeah, you, you can't argue that she wasn't doing that. <laughs> There's a lot of satisfaction in this to ha see Phoebe completely fall on her face and just Phoebe. The other charmed ones are horrible, but the fact it's just Phoebe. Mm-hmm is hilarious page most of the time not quite as bad but sometimes she falls <laughs> onto their level sometimes they're like you can earn your powers back but only the one you misused you're never going to see empathy and levitation again <laughs> but the one you misused you maybe you can earn that back <laughs> oh my goodness uh they leave and barbus is like hey, i won i get to be alive again woohoo mm -hmm. pretty cool and also, I know what you're up to, Gideon, and then Gideon poops himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gloats to Gideon, saying his greatest fear is the Charmed Ones are going to find out he's the one after Wyatt. Dun, dun, dun. Boom. Yeah, and then presumably Gideon teleports out and a poop's left behind. <laughs> <laughs> and then a sexy clip plays on the hologram machine. Uh, yeah, they're like, we watch this when you guys aren't here, actually. Can you get out? <laughs> We don't have any dicks, so we're not masturbating. We're just floating heads for some reason. <laughs> if you're put on the tribunal and you're an elder or a demon, are you transformed into a big floating head? Like, is there a reason for this? Or are they, like, in another room and they don't yeah, want to show Yeah, I think up? they just don't want to walk to the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Speak into the mic. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's the end of the episode. What are your final thoughts, Phelan? Um, There's a lot of stupid going on here, but... Like I said, because Phoebe has consequences for some of her actions, not all of them, she should be punished worse. But it's nice to see something come to that stupid <laughs> Phoebe for all her horrible deeds. Phoebe doesn't seem to act like she thinks this is a just punishment, just she will take it because yeah, I guess. in the end that'll... Yeah. She's just feeling sorry for herself. It's one of the most frustrating things about Churn is like there's never really any big self-realization about any of the bad things they do yeah. because like you could have these things happen, but just have the characters eventually learn from them like realize yeah. they've been very selfish well, they're anytime, putting you know their dates and stuff above people's lives yeah <laughs> anytime there seems to be a self-realization they twist it around into something stupid and selfish like they're like oh we're selfish but we're allowed to be selfish and it's like well yeah to an extent mm -hmm. but when you're being so careless that you're doing this kind of shit then it's just becoming like a dick you're not a hero anymore you're the villain yeah <laughs> And like, yeah, and like, that's what Phoebe turns into after the whole Cole saga, which was brought up in this. Like, but you could have had like this real, you know, self-realization arc with her after the whole Cole thing. And like, mm. she realizes she put her wanting to be with Cole above everything else and let herself fall into darkness and all that. Yeah, but then she just says like it was all Cole. Yeah, and this is like, no, it was actually all him, even though I'm the one who told him to take on the true darkness and all that stuff and become mm -hmm. the source of evil pretty bad uh this episode i mean uh barbus is right i do enjoy billy drago's performance mm -hmm. um clips and trials are still pretty boring mm -hmm. <laughs> so i don't know if it's like it's not really an enjoyable episode for me i guess it doesn't make me mad because there is some satisfaction in it but it's a very mid episode to me 
think this far into Charmed, and especially because of the way Billy Drago's funny on the prosecution, <laughs> I'd say it's pretty good for where Charmed is at this point. I got more enjoyment out of that promo <laughs> than the episode. <laughs> All right. Uh, Phelan, final question. Who is your Margoyle or your car man? standout yeah. loser of the episode or the hero of the definitely episode definitely do car man first and that is barbus absolutely <laughs> all over the place agreed <laughs> <laughs> he had the best lines you know have to hide stuff to save their magical asses was i boring him ah oh, come on <laughs> <laughs> but he was right the whole time he and really he was, was right the hero of he the was episode. right yeah <laughs> he's the most right character in the episode uh -huh. Do you, have a, do you have a Margoyle? Margoyle is Phoebe, 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 uh -huh. Phoebe. Stupid Phoebe. <laughs> Opening the episode with I need dates. Trying to use magic to get premonitions early so she can find out if these dates are worth anything so she doesn't have to waste the calories. What the fuck? But she can't be bothered with saving people's lives when Daryl's forced to kill someone and they just go well off to the date. I'm like, yeah. You clean this up, Daryl. Have fun with your corpse. Yeah, it should be noted this traumatizes Daryl. This mm -hmm. is a plot point later that he doesn't want to be involved with things because of what happened here. Mm -hmm. like, they're, she's so terrible. Like, I can't stand her. Yeah, I'm sure Piper would have been bad had she actually been in the episode full time. But mm -hmm. as it was, a very good Piper episode. <laughs> <laughs> Since she was out pregnant. <laughs> she, yeah, she can't get the Margoyle. Yeah, agreed no, on both yeah, counts. Yeah. yeah, It's Phoebe. It has it's, to be Phoebe. Phoebe. She's the fucking worst. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> All right, Phelan, anything else? Absolutely not. I mean, what you gonna do? Come Let's, on. Come on. <laughs> All right, well, if you guys uh, enjoyed this episode of Charmed Rewind, we'd appreciate it if you gave us a like, a subscribe, or a review. Maybe on iTunes, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, you can find us in audio form at anchor.fm or on iTunes, anywhere that you can find podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash series and youtube.com slash Phalus. You can support our stuff on Patreon, uh, get in on these Charm Rewind polls, or see videos early, all sorts of other stuff. My Patreon is patreon.com slash movie nights. Phelan's is patreon.com slash Phelus. Thanks to Peter Hunter for editing the podcast for us. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Pretor Hunter. You can also find him on Twitter at Pretor Hunter. Uh, you should check out his stuff. He's a really funny guy. And uh, he worked on Rift Tracks the Game, which is another funny thing to check out. He's got a lot of sand trues. He's got a lot of sand trues, yeah, on his YouTube channel. He's uh, trying to beat Pokemon using just sand trues on his team. So, pretty cool stuff. Uh, Phelan, what hashtags should we use? Hashtag, uh, this was right. <laughs> Hashtag, bad cop, lazy cop. Hashtag, <laughs> <laughs> Boobus. <laughs> what? I would I was saying boobish. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nobody's gay for Barbus. <laughs> anyway, that's it. We'll see you guys next time on Charmed Rewind. Woo! Oh, Charmanders. I didn't call them that. Yeah. <laughs> Sandrews. Sandrews. <laughs> see ya. <laughs>